In there somewhere, I have a Nissan GTR that is unfinished. I also have a 981 Porsche Cayman GT4, which is unfinished. And over here, I have a 5 litre twin turbo RS6, which I can definitely say I have abandoned. And again, in there somewhere, I have a TVR Cerbera, where well, you can see the Speed 6 engine and gearbox. But again, I've abandoned it. Now, all of those cars have got something in common, apart from the GTR, which I only bought about six months ago, but the others I bought over a year ago. And yeah, everyone's been asking in the comments what is happening with them, because nothing seems to be going on. And well, in this video, I'm gonna to attempt to cleanse my mind, cleanse your minds as well, because everyone hasn't got closure on these cars, and we're gonna try and do a bit to every single one of them and try and get the ball rolling to get them all done. But it's not easy. And that is because you hit stumbling blocks along the way and those stumbling blocks can usually be quite large and they can delay things for a long time. Like the GTR for example, I really want to get this done and I really want to get it back on the road. But as we saw from the last video on it, I'm going to put a video uh, link in the top right hand corner because it, I appreciate it has done some time. But it does need to go on a jig to get this rear corner pulled out. And obviously I don't have a jig which means I need to farm that job out. But the trouble is trying to find someone with a jig and someone who actually wants to do private work. I've contacted so many companies that will only do insurance work. I found one eventually, they came up, they looked at it, they said yeah we'll do it went away, heard nothing, I spent weeks chasing, and eventually they've just blanked me completely. So that cost me a lot of time. Now I've eventually found someone, and in today's video I'm hopefully gonna get it wrapped up with some, uh, like a shrink wrap start, so just basically get it closed in the elements, because we've got to stick on a trailer and take it over to the body shop to get that done. So we can get it back and start rebuilding this rear quarter. Um, so we're gonna come back to that in a minute. Now, I don't think I've actually done a video on the GT4 since it's come back from the body shop, but it is now completely painted. And here she is, the quarter look, all completely, no, completely, completely done. And uh, yeah, it looks epic, but there's still a lot to do. And I've been waiting for parts, parts have been on back order. Um, and as we know, I had to wait six weeks for the car just to get the body shop slopped. But it is now all good. And we're gonna do a bit to this car as well. And we're gonna get the spoiler back on. And uh, I think there's a few more parts I need to maybe order. But again, until I get it in the workshop, start working on it, it's hard to know what that is. And the poor old RS6 over here. Now, this has ended up sitting here for ages because the last time I did a video on it, it drove, but it started smoking after you'd left it for a while. So what happens is the oil was absolutely fine when you were driving it, um, but when you left it overnight, oil would get into the intercooler pipes, and then when you start it up the next day, it will smoke like hell. Now, I suspected both the turbos had gone, and that's kind of why it's sat here ever since, because it isn't a, it, well, it's not an easy job. It is a massive, it's an engine out job, and replacing the turbos also costs thousands of pounds as well. The car's already done 250,000 miles. I spent about 10 grand on it. So for me, I guess I kind of like just parked the problem and just forgot about it. However, I did actually watch uh, Ricky from RE Performance, one of his videos, he had an RS6 on his channel uh, a couple of months ago, and he it had the exact same symptoms as this. And he actually found out that it wasn't the turbos, because I was, I was a bit skeptical that both turbos had gone at the exact same time as well, which is maybe another reason I wasn't 100% sure it was the turbos. But anyway, the, because this is a dry sump system, the oil pump has a scavenge in it. And so what happens when you turn it off, it scavenges the oil from the engine and pushes it back into the oil tank, which is, oh my God, this is very dirty. The oil tank's healer. So the oil pump scavenges the oil and puts it back into the pump. But what's, uh, what actually happens is the seals in the oil pump can leak and the oil can flow backwards and into the intake. And guess what? Down into the intercooler hoses. So that makes sense, and I think therefore it could be the oil seals in the oil pump that need replacing, which isn't actually an engine out job. Trouble is, a new oil pump from Audi is about £4,000, and I don't really think you can get them anymore. So after another couple of months of trying to work out what to do, I found that you can get, an, uh, someone, makes, uh, someone abroad um, can make a oil repair si seal kit, and uh, I have actually ordered one of those. I don't know when it's gonna be here, but it will be soon. I'm hoping, so eventually we can get back on the RS6 and get that running too. And I'll also admit, there's probably some points during the week that I could have done a little bit of work to each of these cars as I've gone, but if I'm honest, sometimes it's easier just to bring a new car on the channel that will be a nice, easier fix, 
and it just gives you constant content and there's not me worrying about when's the next time I'm gonna be able to get a video out. So I'm definitely guilty of that too. But we are gonna start on the GTR because quite frankly, it is in the way constantly. And what we need to do is get that wheel off. I have a new, di do I have a disc? I don't know if I do. I don't need a disc. Right, I have a caliper and I have a brake. Do I have a brake pipe? I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I don't need to brake this. All right, I have a caliper and I've just got some caliper bolts and I've got a brake line. So that means that we can at least jam the rear caliper brake up, put some brake fluid in the car and at least have three brakes that are working, which means we can drive the car about and not crash into anything. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, get it rolling, and then we're gonna seal it all up to the elements and load it on a trailer and get it shipped off to be jigged. Now, do you ever get halfway through the day, like it is now, and wonder what am I gonna have for dinner tonight? I don't know what we've got, we've got nothing in, probably gonna end up being a takeaway. Now that is where HelloFresh comes in. They've kindly sponsored today's video and they are an online meal delivery service and they're all about delivering nice and healthy and fresh foods to your doorstep so you don't have to worry about what you're cooking for dinner that night or any other night. It's really easy to use, you just need to download that app and then click build your plan and then it asks you a few questions, you just need to answer questions and it brings out the best meals specified for you. So for me, it's gonna be uh, probably calorie smart um, and protein rich as well, which I do like. And also family, because we're a family of five. So continue, and I want high protein, we'll click that as well. And also we'll go for probably, no, I'm happy with the rest, high protein's fine. And then eat more wholesome foods. Yep, I'm happy with that. And also saving time as well because I don't like cooking for ages. Family of four, yep, we'll do that as well. And we'll go for three weeks. You press next and it literally brings up a whole meal plan for you. And then all you need to do is select some of your favorite meals. And there's loads of different meals available. Look, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Triple mac and cheese there, one of my son's favorites. And they've all got all the information you'll ever need to know about each one as well. So if you're thinking about giving HelloFresh a try, if you use my discount code here, which is SS2024, you'll get 60% off your first box and 20% off for the next two months. Plus you'll get some free gifts thrown in as well. So a massive thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. So to get the GTR to be able to move, I need to connect the brakes up at least so I can stop. So to do that, I need to connect up the new rear caliper and also brake line as well, get it all fitted. And what I actually did, what you can't see here, is I've put some blocks of wood in between the caliper to reenact a disc. So when I put my foot on the brake, the pistons come out, hit the wood and don't pop out and lose brake fluid everywhere. So then I just need to bleed all the brakes and then yeah, put it all back together, put it back on the ground and then we get some sort of brake pedal and at least on three wheels, we can stop and then we got the seat in. Right, driver's seat all now in, nice and clean, hoovered all the carpet as well, and I've just gone round and cleaned all the edges to the car, because that is where we're gonna be sticking this uh, wrap on. Basically, this is a very expensive, it's like 60 quid. Right. <sighs> I have not sat in here for quite some time. Right, button. Ah. Oh. No, here we go. Right. Woo! Beautiful. Now that was the first start in two, three, four months. I don't even know, but start up good. Ah, oh, smells good, sounds good too. Right, now how's my little brake fix worked? Right, I'm only gonna know if this works if I just put my foot on the brake, put it in reverse, and it holds me there. Ho oh, ho ho, it is holding. Ah, oh, yes, wait. Oh God, right, the brakes seem to be working. Parking sensors, not so good though. Oh, that is a really annoying noise.
So that is the GTR now mostly waterproof and is now ready to go on a trailer. Um, I'm going to put it back inside just in case, but that's now ready to go on the trailer early next week and off to the body shop. So the next time you're going to see this car, fingers crossed, this whole quarter will have been pulled out, all straightened, and then we are ready to go with a new subframe and refit the new quarter. Right, now we're going to move on to the 981 GT4, but first we need to remove the R8 because it's in the way. I don't think I've actually mentioned the R8 yet, and there will be a video coming up on this soon as well because, I don't know if you've realised, but I've never actually done a video on driving this on the road. Now, for those of you who are relatively new to the channel, I did a full engine rebuild on this uh, car because it had a seized engine. I ended up buying a second-hand engine and rebuilding that from the ground up and fitting it in here. However, there is a reason I haven't driven it on the road and there is a few niggling issues with it. Now, there shouldn't be a issue of the engine. That's fine. The engine, as you can hear, runs sweet. Although, oh my God, it's just like the RS6. It's just very messy. Bit ashamed actually. Um, but the problem is actually with the engine that I bought secondhand and ended up rebuilding. Now there's a problem where uh, a couple of sump bungs have been rounded off. So when you put in a sump bung and do it up tight, it won't do up tight and therefore it leaks a bit of oil. Now it's nothing major, but it's just enough that I wasn't happy taking it out on the road with a potentially leaking sump bung that could just fall out and then put oil all over the road. Yeah, and I know that's a really pathetic reason for not taking it on the road and not finishing it, but it's the truth. So again, I do want to get this finished and there will be a video coming up on this soon as well, as well as the RS6 to get this done and on the road, road, uh, road tested, because I do want to get this ready for the summer as well. Um, but yeah, the engine, I know it's cold, so I'm not going to rev it too much, but engine's good. And finally, the GT4. Let's get her in the workshop. Bloody hell, that was a lot harder to get into than the R8. Oh, these buckets are not forgiving. <laughs> Loud, no exhaust, part of the problem. Now the 981 GT4. Now I don't know if I've actually shown this painted. I really can't remember. But as you can see, it's back from the body shop. It has been painted and I am so happy with how this has come out. It just looks absolutely perfect. All the panels, I mean, these aren't even in properly. They're just, they've just literally been put there so I could transport it back without anything flapping around. But just look how good the lines are. They are absolutely perfect everything all perfect the roof i do need to adjust a little bit don't worry i have had it in the exact perfect position but we have to keep taking it off and on to be able to, uh, to paint everything so when they've put it back on they've also just needs a little bit of tweaking but as you can see there look the lines are pretty much spot on anyway so bumpers all done and we've got all behind the bumper and all in here has been painted too and everything everything's been seam sealed as well so um yeah with a gt4 it's we're on the home straight with it really there are a few parts that i still need to order from behind that sit behind the bumper here and that's what the premise of this little bit's going to be is just taking the bumper off um, i've got all my diffusers as well um, i've had them actually painted gloss black because they do come standard in plastic um, i have got my rear lights and uh, the side skirt's all been painted as well. I did have to lose my Porsche stripe here, so I'm probably going to do the same with the other side. And I've also had uh, this all repaired as well because this was a little bit damaged. I do need a new indicator and, I, uh, and the front splitter was slightly damaged as well. So we removed all that and I've had that also painted in gloss black to match the rear diffuser as well. So the car should be pretty much uh, gloss black and obviously metallic white with the gloss black wheels. So it should look good. Um, and also I wanna get that bloody spoiler on as well, cause it just looks like a normal Cayman like this. So I wanna get that spoiler on now as well, just to make it start looking like a GT4 again. 
But yeah, really happy. I think I'm just gonna work on it outside actually, because nice and sunny, and yeah, it's a bit cramped in the workshop. So rear bumper off. You don't know how much better it makes me feel seeing that spoiler on and just making it look like a GT4 again. It just looks so much better with it. Um, the only main problem we've got is I really don't know how to resolve this yet. You might have already spotted it, but part of my end cap here is broken off. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you can't get this as a single piece. So I really don't know how I'm going to resolve this issue at the moment unless I end up spending God knows how much money on a new top spoiler. Um, which I'd rather avoid if I can, but I do need to look into what to do about that. Um, right, we are pretty much on the home straight now. There's one more parts order I've got to do. And to give an example, this is why I end up keeping a lot of the pieces, the broken pieces on cars, because something like this, look, I can just now pull out of here and put into its rightful place in the new one. And that is an example of why, because there's so many things like that and if I took them all out and put them in a bowl, I would have no clue where they all properly went. So now I can discard that. Now moving on to the bumper, I've just fitted my new complete gloss black diffuser and yeah, it looks sick. So that is gonna look epic once it's on. Now this is what it looked like before. Here's uh, half of the old one. So it's just like that before. So now obviously it looks epic all in gloss black. So I do just need this grill that sits behind it which is, uh, I believe, this whole piece here. So I do need to order one of those. So yeah, now I've just got to build up the bumper. I've fitted the lights and the third brake light. So uh, a few more bits to do to that, and then it can go on the car. But I'm going to save all that for the next dedicated video on the GT4, and that will be the last video on it. So I'm going to make sure I've got absolutely everything now. I've just got my uh, parts list, so I'll get everything ordered, and then we'll do one final video on the GT4, and it will be complete. So moving on to the TVR, Trevor. Oh, Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Ah, here's my uh, front splitter for the GT4, by the way, in gloss black also, look. Put here nicely out the way, so that looks sick as well. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really start with this. Engine and gearbox and chassis, and I've got a container full of all the parts for it. Now, quite soon after I fully stripped all this car and then realized everything had to go off to be refurbished, it kind of, left me in a bit of a position where it was gonna be really difficult to film the car um, because I'd end up sending something away, get it back, fit it, need something else doing. And because it's so much unknown, I'd, it would, I'd just be constantly stopping filming, stopping filming. So that's the main reason this car has been put on hold for all this time. But my thinking now is I'm gonna send everything I've got, well, I've actually already pre-arranged this by the way, everything I've got, I'm gonna send up to, I think it's Central TVR, and they're gonna refurbish or replace absolutely everything. Um, the chassis, they're gonna do as well, and I'm gonna send the engine and gearbox away and the diff to be refurbished as well. Now, everything's gonna come back to me a bit like a parts car, so I can then start filming it and actually be able to film a decent amount all in one go. So it's essentially, we're gonna get everything back, new, refurbished, and we're gonna put it together like a, a kit car, uh, we're going to get it up and running and then once it's up and running the shell uh, or the, actually the whole car will then go off to be resprayed. So as you can imagine this is not a cheap um, repair as well. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be 20 odd grand to get this thing back up and running and that's with me putting it all back together as well. And I am going to keep it all OEM apart from the engine where I'm going, I think you can, what you can do is uh, you can get a standalone ECU because uh, if you remember, my wiring for my ECU was all shooed. But you can also add in some other sensors which help the engine run a lot better and a lot more economically, more powerful and better on fuel as well. So I think I'm going to do that. And that's obviously not cheap. And when the car goes off to be painted, I'm going to get the interior redone as well. So it's going to hopefully look like, as I've said before, a show car. So yeah, that's the TVR. Unfortunately, short but sweet update, but that's why I have the VW Transporter van because I'm now going to be able to take the engine, all the parts up and drop them off in their relevant places and also the chassis too. So guys, I hope you did enjoy this little update video. Um, yeah, I'm going to finally get the ball rolling on these unfinished projects because I know I get hassled all the time about them as well. Um, it would be good to get at least the GT4, the R8 uh, done and then we've just got the GTR which is obviously going off and then the TVR, which is still an ongoing project. So um, 
yeah, it'd be nice to get them done. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this little update. And also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to watch, watch more stuff like this. And uh, the next video, I don't actually know, might be the R8 because I've got now all the parts for the RSQ3's engine and it's got to be sent away and the crank has got to be uh, checked and ground down uh, where possible. Uh, so yeah, cheers guys. See you in the next one.